This is a Chevy Blazer 2000 model four door with a no start condition. I have already verified spark so right now I'm going to check the fuel system. And what you want to do is find this port back here on the driver's side and it's on the fuel rail and that little black cap over here which I'm going to point to that one you want to take that off and screw in your uh, fuel pressure tester Now you're going to cycle your ignition key a couple of times and see what your fuel pressure is. It should be 60 PSI when you turn the key on. The fuel pump relay will activate for one to two seconds and then shut down. Notice my fuel pressure is not up to par here. In fact, not only does it barely go up to 10 or 15 PSI, but it also bleeds back, which is another indicator of the faulty fuel pump. So now I'm going to go to the main fuse block and I'm going to look for the fuel pump relay. It'll be underneath this box right here. And the fuse uh, cover will actually give you a uh, layout of where all the relays and fuses are. I'm trying to get a picture of it here. You'll see right there in the middle it says fuel pump. That is the relay you want to pull so that we can check and actually bypass the circuit to run the pump. That's the relay right there. You just pull that straight up. And the relay has a, a diagram on it. And what you want to jump is 30 to 87. 30 being the hot circuit. 87 being the one that goes to the pump. So here I grab the test light. Key is off right now. And I'm going to verify which is my hot circuit. So you see the test light light? That is number 30, pin 30 right there. That is hot at all times. That's the one we're going to jump her across to a circuit 87. Here's a picture of the uh, relay. And this is on the underside. Remember, 30 to 87, so we're going to go diagonal. Now on your wiring schematic, you'll see pin 30 right here. You're jumping that to 87. Whatever you do, do not touch pin 85 with power because that goes right back to your PCM and you could fry it. So this is just an illustration of the wiring diagram. So as you can see, the PCM turns this relay on, which closes the switch. And this is wired hot all the time. And all it does is it routes it down right to, and turns on the pump. So just be aware, stay away from 
pin 85 and 86. The one you want to go to is 30 to 87. Just reinforcing it. Okay, so now I got my jumper here. You can make your own or find something that works. And I'm going to jumper the two circuits I mentioned. And this will turn the pump on full time. Notice that now I have my full pressure, 60 PSI. In theory, the vehicle will run right, right now if I started it up. But this was a no-start problem, so this really is not telling you much other than you'll be able to drain the tank with this method. Here I hooked up a scope for those who like to play with scopes. Um, this is a pattern of what a, a bad pump looks like. You use your lamp, low amp probe right here. I'm going to plug it in there just to show you how you hook it up. Just like that. And that's the pattern I have right there. Notice how there's dips. That's the faulty part of the circuit. That should be a nice continuous pattern. And it's got all those dips in it. So that is a faulty pump. Okay, the pattern should look something like this. This is a good one. And then there's another one. Or it could look like this one. This is another known good pattern. Okay, now let's drain the fuel tank. So you want to go to your fuel filter, remove the outline held by two clips. Make sure you have something to re recover all this fuel with underneath. Then grab a 3 8 hose and stick it on the end of the uh, fuel filter. And you could drain the fuel at this point. then go jumper the circuit to start the pump and start draining fuel. If your pump doesn't want to start, sometimes you can go underneath and bang on a tank with a hammer and it'll start the pump. Now for the fun part, fuel tank removal. We're going to remove the drive shaft. There's your uh, straps for the fuel tank. There's two of them, 15 millimeters. You can see it'll be easier if you take the drive shaft off because it goes a little to the side. And on the back here are your two clamps for your fuel fill. You're going to take those off. And you're going to slide the shaft out of the transmission. The bolts for the drive uh, shaft are 7 16 And before you remove this, I like to mark the location of the shaft to the uh, differential yoke. So I just put a few scratches on it so you can put it back exactly where it was. Once you have the bolts and caps off the drive line, you can use a screwdriver to pry the shaft forward. Watch out that these caps don't fall off on the sides. So what I use is a black electrical tape or any tape that you can and just tape the, clap, uh, the caps in place so that they won't fall off. This will save you a lot of grief. Then just pull the shaft out and notice I have a, a container up by where the shaft and transmission will be. Sometimes you'll get fluid coming out of there, so that's just a precaution.
so I have removed the tank straps and I lowered the tank down. Make sure you disconnect that vapor hose first. Then up on top of the tank here, you'll be able to uh, get your hands up in there and remove these connectors, which I'm going to show you. Right there. And then as far as the fuel lines are concerned, if you're having a lot of trouble getting them off, um, you could actually just take a screwdriver and, and pry the whole, uh, the fuel pump part of it. You could actually break that top off, which I'll show you later. You could break that whole piece off if, if you can't get those lines off. That makes it a lot easier to remove the lines later. Now with the fuel tank out, I like to blow off the top of it to uh, clean everything out of the way so I don't get debris in there. And you're going to remove this ring. I used a screwdriver and hammer and you can see where I broke off the top of the uh, fuel lines. I found out later that if you take the spare tire off, it's a lot easier to get to those fuel lines. There's your vapor recovery line. And just tap this to the left. And you want to get it started just so that you can move this little lock out of the way. It's a plastic lock, so be careful not to break it. You just hit the ring a little further just so it goes just past it. And then you continue the rest of the way. And there it is. This one is the old style because it has a strainer on it. You don't see that anymore. Here's your new pump. Notice it says new strainer internal to reservoir, which makes things better. I always hated using those strainers. Put your new gasket into the tank. And uh, let's see what else here. Oh, yeah, and then uh, get your uh, float and clip it onto the pump. It only goes on one way. It just clips it right in, just like that. Old habits are hard to break. I usually just lube this seal a little bit. And then put the float in first, and then slide in the uh, pump assembly. There's a tab that I'm pointing to there. Make sure that lines up, and that the fuel lines are pointing in the direction you were. Remember, uh, they were. It only goes on one way. If if the tab lines up and the fuel lines are pointing a different direction, you might have the wrong pump. Once you have your retaining ring in position, take your hammer and screwdriver and just tap it back into place. Just tap it in. Nice and easy. And you'll know how far to go. I'll show you here in a minute. As soon as your lock is back into position, right what I'm pointing at right there. Here's a better view. Right there, that's what you want.
This here is your new connector that you're going to have to install. If you're running the factory pump, most likely you're going to have to use this connector. This is a diagram shows you how it's wired. It's pretty much follow the colors uh, as they are. Uh, there's only one wire that's different. Shoot back, go, go back underneath the vehicle. And you just peel this tape back and the wiring loom. And this is the old connector. It's a square type connector, not flat like the new one. So you can have to cut this off. and then get a pair of wire strippers and strip out about a, a quarter of an inch on each wire. You'll find that two of them are 18 gauge and the other two are 16 gauge. So here's your buck connectors. Notice there's two 16 gauge and two 18 gauge ones. So you put those on the appropriate wire sizes. Here's your new connector. You can cu cut off the excess wire that you don't need. And you'll do the same thing. You'll strip off about a quarter of a bare wire on each end. Then just crimp on your butt connectors. These are special connectors that you have to use. These connectors are like heat shrink tubing, so you grab your little mini torch and then you just uh, heat up the butt connectors and they will melt into place. This will create a nice watertight seal. After this, you pretty much just uh, reinstall the tank and you should be ready to go. Just take your time here and do it right. And then when you're done with this, you can put your loom back on, you can wrap it up with tape, make it look all nice and copacetic. So now the fuel tank will be installed. Here it is. I'm turning the key on. Bam! 60 PSI. Notice how it holds pressure. And now here is the scope. I'm going to hook up to it. This is what the new pattern looks like. Not like the other ones, but as you can see, it's a continuous pattern. That is a good pattern. Good luck, everyone. Hope this helps.